Tracy. All right. How are you today? Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get, all right. Okay, um, let's see here. We are going to just kind of chat a little bit before I get started into my crafting. Um, so maybe what we'll start with while we're waiting for a few more people to join us is we will start with the winner of last week's prize patrol. So this is a package of cards that I will send out and everybody who commented on last week's video or shared last week's video got an entry. So each comment was one entry and um, if you shared then you got five entries. So I've got everybody's name all in this little bucket here. So I'm going to draw for the winner of this week's prize. And the winner is Sue Weir. So congratulations, Sue. I will get that to you. So I'll set that aside so I don't forget. And then, of course, I've got a package for next week. And so this is another set of cards, of handmade cards. And again, you can get an entry for every time that you comment. Um, Every time you share the video, you'll get five entries. So feel free to ask questions along the way. I'm happy to answer them. If I miss something, if I'm crafting or whatever and I happen to miss your comment, then um, I will go back and read all the comments and be sure to answer you then. All right, uh, let's see what else. Uh, so I think last week I mentioned that one of the things that I was most excited about was um, the planner. and. Last Friday, I was waiting for my order to arrive and it finally arrived. So this is it here. And I will do a planner flip through um, eventually, but it's not, it's not quite set up yet. I've started and I wanted to customize it. So I, this is backwards for you guys, I think, or at least it's backwards for, yeah, it's backwards for you guys. Um, so it comes, this is what the cover normally looks like. It doesn't have this saying on the front but I had to personalize it. So I cut with my E cutter, set goals and crush them. I cut it from vinyl and then added that to the front. And then on the inside, I added, hey, Shara, I added um, a pocket that I created just from patterned paper. So there's two little pockets here and then up here, and then there's a pocket on the side. And in this pocket here, I've got, the stickers that come with the kit, I've got them tucked into the pocket. So what I did was I trimmed them down a little bit so that they would slide in nicely, trimmed off the holes. Because last year in the planner, we had stickers as well. And it's great that they have holes, so you have the option of putting them into your planner. But I found I never would go back and look at those stickers, so I hardly ever used them. So I decided to try tucking them in the pocket and see if I used them more. So with the planner, you get two sheets of this sticker, two sheets of this one, which is great. These, I love these little check boxes. Hey, Kathy, so that you can put them on there and then you can write your to-do list and then check them off. I would put them going this way. Um, and then you get the same sheet just in different colors. And of course everything coordinates. And then you get these gorgeous silver foil stickers as well. So you get two sheets of each of those stickers in with the planner. And then you get two of these pockets as well and it's a double-sided pocket so it's got a pocket on the front and the pocket on the back and then um, you get a roll of washi tape and then you get all the insert pages as well so like I said I'll do a better flip through but you can see that I've got all the pages insert inserted I added this piece of vinyl to this um, tab or index as well and I did that on one other one I didn't want to do it on all of them I didn't want it to be redundant but uh, yeah, so I'm excited to start this. I'm gonna start it in July. So I'm just working on getting it set up on how I wanna use it. And it's always when I work it, when I start a new planner, it's always kind of an experiment to see how, 
how I'm going to use it and how I'm going to set it up. Yeah, the silver stickers are nice, aren't they, Tracy? <laughs> um, I think I'll use them for other things as well. Like I think they'll be great for scrapbook pages and even maybe for some cards as well. I find I only use just a few stickers um, in my planners and then I get I want to move on to something different. So for the first month or two, I might use the stickers and then I, I tend to stamp or use pattern paper or whatever in them. So I'm sure they'll get used somehow. Um, yeah, so it takes a little bit of time. It takes, uh, takes me a couple months to work in my planner to figure out how it's going to work best for me. And I think it's like that for a lot of people, unless you use the same system over and over, but I like to experiment and I get tired of using the same thing. So I like to switch it up every year. So I'm excited to get started with that. And like I said, I will share a flip through, um, once I've used it for a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. So I announced the winner. I told you how you could enter to win next week's gift. Uh, let's see here. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, color inspiration because we have this had this big color revamp. There's a whole lot of new colors that were introduced. And I know that for me, that is a really big challenge because I find I get comfortable with the colors that I use often. Um, I often get in a rut where I use the same colors over and over and over. Um, so it's it can be a challenge to introduce some of those new colors when you just aren't familiar with them, with you haven't you when you haven't used them much. So I thought I'd talk about, or we could talk about um, different places that you can find inspiration in our everyday lives, and then of course in our crafting lives as well. Um, so let's see here. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll put the camera down and I'll start crafting and then we can kind of chat about it um, while I'm crafting. Okay, so just give me a moment here. I'm going to see if I remember how to do this from last week <laughs> without being too wobbly. Okay, so we want to... that and then I'm upside down and I'm going to switch you let me just move the cal camera down okay now my computer screen is a bit delayed so I just want to make sure that everything is lined up I'm going to turn on my lamp here Okay, how does that look? I think everything's in the in the screen. Okay, all right, so uh, today I'm gonna make two cards and I'm gonna talk about where I got my color inspiration from them, um, or for them. And I'm gonna share a couple other places as well that you can find um, both online and through me um, where you can find some color inspiration. Um, first of all, I wanted to point out this, and I'm hoping you can see this, I've kind of cut it in the sheets. This is a color coach that Stampin' Up! has provided. So in my blog post that just went live at 11, um, where I share the projects from today and a supply list, um, I've also linked to this. I'm hoping, I didn't get a chance to check the link, I'm hoping that the link will work and that you don't have to be a demonstrator to access this. Um, so this is a color coach that Stampin' Up! has provided us with and it has all of our core colors listed and then three different color options for them. So for example, if you decided that you wanted to use pumpkin pie today, um, but you weren't sure what kind of colors you wanted to mix it with. So they've given you three different options here. Um, so you could use that as a guide. Like you can, you can go ahead and use those like this, this orange, the red, and the pink. Those are colors I probably wouldn't necessarily have chosen to put together myself. But because I see that Stampin' Up! has put them together and Stampin' Up! is in the business of making things coordinate. So you know that it's going to work. Um, I would probably do it. Whereas if I came up with that color combination on my own, I likely never would have. Uh, actually, I, my head probably wouldn't have even gone there. So this is a great resource. And then there's one for the in colors as well, both years of in colors. And I, like I said, I've linked those in the blog post. So this is a great resource that I love to use. So I'll set that aside. Um, and then the other thing that I love to use is I love to use our patterned papers. So we have these great 
patterned papers in the catalog. This particular one is the Garden Impressions. It's a six by six paper pack and it's a beautiful floral paper. So lots of florally images, but then on the back side, they tend to be just a little bit more, um, not quite so florally. Okay, so and the colors that Stampin' Up! puts together, you know that they're gonna work. So this one has, this paper pack has a ton of colors in it. It's got Calypso Coral, Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, Night of Navy, Pacific Point, Petal Pink, Powder Pink, Soft Sea Foam, So Saffron, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. So all of those colors, you know that any mix of them will work. And even if you don't own the DSP, you can still go to that, that those pages, the DSP pages in the catalog, and look at what colors Stampin' Up! has put together, and then use those colors in your crafting. So for the first card, I chose this DSP as my inspiration, and I've chosen a few colors. I didn't use all of those colors. That's a lot of colors to use on one project. But this is the card that I'm going to create here. So you can see I've used, I've chosen, this was the patterned paper that I chose first. So I chose the colors basically from that patterned paper. Um, and I used the tailored tag punch and punched a couple from the patterned paper and then a couple from coordinating cardstock. Stamped my greeting, which I, I will go ahead and make up this whole card. And then used the background color here for the background on the card. And then used the darkest, the shaded spruce color as my card base. So the, the, the color combination came completely from the patterned paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this card. First of all, let me grab my pieces. Okay, so we're gonna do some stamping first. Now the greeting is from the Detailed With Love stamp set. And I chose to use this Life is Sweeter with Friends Like You because we all have friends that we can give a card like that to. So I've got it mounted on my block here and I've got two markers. So I'm using Calypso Coral and Shaded Spruce and I don't want those little dots. So I, the markers are perfect for that. So I'm just going to ink up what I want to use. I'm gonna use the coral for the word sweeter. And you can see that when I use my markers, I'm using it on the side of the marker and not the tip and this will help prolong the life of your markers. I'm getting quite a bit of shadow here. Let's, I don't know if that's gonna be any better. Let's see if that's better. So that will help prolong the, the length of your markers and prevent them fraying on the tips as well. So I've done the word sweeter. Now I'm gonna take my shaded spruce and I'm gonna do the, the smaller words on here. So a lot of times people think, oh, well, isn't that coral color gonna be all dried out by the time you go to stamp? But there's a little trick that I'll show you. Okay, I've got a piece of white, Whisper White cardstock, and I'm just gonna huff on the stamp. So just huff on it, and that re-moistens the ink so that you get a nice, crisp image. All right. And now I'm gonna pull out my tailored tag punch. I love this punch. I'm so glad that it carried over from the occasions catalog. Even though the coordinating stamp set didn't, there's a couple stamp sets in the new catalog that do coordinate with it. Actually, the one I shared last week, we used it. Um, but even this one, it's not meant to coordinate with it, but there's lots of greetings throughout the catalog that you can use with this punch. Okay, so now I've got my shape, I've got my other ones here. Oh, I need one of these. So let's punch one of those. Okay. So now I think I have all of my pieces. So we can go ahead and assemble. I'm gonna fold my card base in half. This is just a standard size card base. So five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then this is a piece of soft sea foam. I love this color. Oh, I love it. And this measures four by five and a quarter. Just adding a little bit of adhesive to it and I'm gonna stick it to my card base. Just in the center. And then I'm gonna pick my 
focal point patterned paper, so the one that I really want to pop, and that's going to go kind of in the center with just a little off, off to the right uh, with a little bit of a border on there. And then do the green one beside it. And I'm just leaving just a little bit of space. And then this guy goes at the top. And so you can you can replicate this card with any of our patterned papers or any pattern paper period. It doesn't have to be our pattern papers. It's an easy card to replicate. It's an easy card to duplicate as well if you or even mass produce mass produce if you need lots of a card. Um, I was inspired by something that I saw online. I can't take credit for this card. I did switch it up a little bit. Um, I think she had the ribbon wrapped all the way around. Um, and I tried that, but it didn't look right with the ribbon that I chose to use. And she used, chose to use, uh, or she used completely different patterned papers and different greetings, as, or in a different greeting as well. Okay, so I'm using dimensionals to pop up my greeting. And that is going to go right about there and then I've gone ahead and tied a bow using the 1 8 inch whisper white sheer ribbon and I'm going to use a mini glue dot to stick that on and I'm just going to stick that kind of right in the seam here just like that and then I'm going to grab a couple rhinestones. I love using my paper piercing tool to pick up the rhinestones because you can easily get underneath the rhinestone and pick up the adhesive. Whereas I find if, you pick, if you're picking them up with your fingers, sometimes you leave the adhesive behind and then they don't stick. So this works perfectly. All right, so there's the card. And then, of course, I did the envelope flap here. I don't have quite enough of that pattern left to do the envelope flap. Actually, and I don't even have an envelope with me. Okay, but when I go to put an envelope with it, I'll probably use this patterned paper to go with it. And the other thing I like to do is I like to try to use up scraps. So if you open this up, I used, I had an extra little strip left so I added that on the inside. So that's another way to decorate the inside of your card as well. Okay, so that is one place that you can get inspiration or another place, I guess, because we've already shared one. Um, the other way or the other another place that you can get inspiration is the catalog. The catalog is full of project ideas. So on every page, there are project samples that you can use for inspiration. So you don't necessarily have to own this. Let's say we were flipping through and you really liked the color combination of this card. You didn't own any of the stamps, but um, you loved the color combination. Then you can turn around and use that color combination. So use your catalog as inspiration. The other thing it's great for is not necessarily just color, but layouts. I loved this layout, so I wanted to, I, I actually plan on recreating it for an upcoming class with a different stamp set using the, um, the, the new sunflower stamp set. I can't remember what it's called, but I plan on trying to recreate this layout in a card, but using that stamp set. So your catalog is full of ideas. So I encourage you to use that as well. Um, whenever I come up with a, or, um, hit a creative roadblock, that's always the first thing I do is pull out my catalog and look for inspiration. And then of course there is your Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. We um, are here to be your creative coach. So we are here to help you if you hit a creative roadblock or if you're having a hard time using um, maybe a color that you have. Uh, so we, if, if you're ever challenged with something like that, please just contact me saying, Sherry, have you come up with any color combinations to use with the color Mossy Meadow or whatever, whatever color it is that you that you are having trouble with. Um, same with stamp sets. If you're looking for ideas or you're struggling with, you have a stamp set and you're struggling with how to use it or ideas on how to use it, then feel free to shoot me an email, send me a, um, send me a text or a Facebook message and I'm more than happy to help you if I can. All right? Okay, so on to the next card. 
Now this one is a color combination that I came up with. I am loving Gorgeous Grape. I, I don't know what it is with that color. I normally am not a fan of the color purple, but Gorgeous Grape has really drawn me in. So I chose, I was experimenting and putting some colors together and I chose to use Gorgeous Grape, Lemon Lime Twist and Mossy Meadow. And I love the way it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and create this card. And for this one, we are using the Rooted in Nature stamp set and the coordinating framelits. Um, so this, this is part of the Nature's Poem Suite, which is a gorgeous suite that I used at stamp class this month. Um, we created four cards with it, and it is so great for so many different things. I actually created uh, my father-in-law's Father's Day card using this set, um, and you can use it for masculine cards, you can use it for feminine cards, you can use it for so many different types of cards. I, we also did a sympathy card with it. Like it's just, I love this stamp set. The greetings in here are so versatile and I love the font. It's, oh, I just love that font. And I love it when they combine fonts as well. That's so fun. So this is, this is all one set. It's just in two different cases because there's so many images. And some of you may recognize this and say, oh, that looks a lot like Lovely as a Tree, which has been around for years and years. Um, and it does. There is a tree that's similar to this in Lovely as, as a Tree. And there are trees that are kind of like that. They're a little bit different. Um, but with Lovely as a Tree, you don't get the framelits, so, which is fabulous. And there's so many different things that you can do with the framelits. And these leaves are so beautiful. They stamp um, that detail just as well as, um, as it looks. Okay, so that's the bundle that we're gonna use. Uh, now, let me see where's my supplies here. Okay. So I've gone ahead and pre-cut some of these pieces just so you don't have to see me do too, too much. So I've got my three colors in scallop squares and I use the layering scallops or layering scallops, the layering squares framelits to cut those out. And then I've got a stitched shape square. So that is from the stitch, stitched shapes framelits. And this continues to be my most used framelit set. I love it because um, you get four sizes of circles, four sizes of ovals, and four sizes in squares, all in one package. That was smart. That was really smart of Stampin' Up! So I've gone ahead and cut the middle one, and now I'm pulling out the smallest square because I'm going to need that. I've got my stamp here, and we don't need that color right now. Let's do, we will do Gorgeous Grape first, and I'm just going to ink it up and stamp it. And then I'm gonna stamp it off lots and lots, try to get off all that excess ink. And bring in my new chamois, clean that off, and let's put away the grapes so that I don't get ink all over everything. And then I'm going to do Mossy Meadow, same thing, stamp off, and then I'm going to do one more in Lemon Lime Twist. Okay, so does anybody else have any ideas? Where do you find your color inspiration? I know a lot of times, um, especially at this time of the year, nature is a great, great place. Hey Shauna, is a great place to find. Hey Lisa, inspiration as well. You can, when you go for a walk outside, especially with the gardens blooming and the trees all bursting with colorful leaves, like it's, um, you can find some beautiful inspiration in nature. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull in my Big Shot. Does anybody else have any ideas? Where do you find your color inspiration? Okay. So I've got my Big Shot here and I'm going to cut a scallop square. Now you can see, hopefully you can see in there, 
Um, it looks like it's not going to cut, but it will cut. It won't cut into the leaf. It's just a little bit bigger than that. And then I'm going to take the leaf framelit that coordinates with that, and the lemon lime twist one. I am actually going to cut out because we're going to pop that up using dimensionals. Okay, so we'll run that through once. Another great place to find color inspiration is um, when you go shopping. I don't know if anybody else is like this, but when I go clothes shopping, I often see the clothes in, um, in Stampin' Up! colors. So, so you can see that it didn't cut it out there. Um, so I will, I'll be wandering through a clothing shop and um, I'll say to whoever I'm with, oh, that's, the, that's Calypso Coral, or I love those two colors that they put together, Lemon Lime Twist and Gorgeous Grape, just using that as an example. But I love those two colors together, so that will inspire me to come home and combine those colors on a crafting project. So that's something that I do often. Another place that I love to look for color inspiration is at the grocery store in the produce section. Produce can be so pretty. It can be so colorful. All right, so we're done with the big shot. I'll move that back out of the way. Okay, so now we've got our pieces. We can start to assemble. So I'm going to stick the Mossy Meadow one to the Mossy Meadow Scallop Square, and then the grape to the grape square. Had some, I must have cut glitter recently with that cutting pad because I've got glitter everywhere now. Okay, and then the white scallop will go onto the lemon lime twist scallop, and then this guy's going to go on with dimensionals. Just like that. Okay. So we're gonna set those aside for a minute because now what we wanna do is we want to stamp our greeting. And um, let me pull out the ones that I need here. Now this is not photopolymer, so it's not the easiest to line up. If I was just doing one line, I probably just would've used a clear block and just stamped it. But because I wanna do both lines together, so words are never enough as on one stamp, and to thank you for all you do is on another stamp. Um, I wanted to get them lined up and I wanted to get them perfectly spaced and straight. So that is where this handy little tool comes in. So my stamp positioner, so my, my stamp apparatus. So we are going to use this and I'm going to share how I got them perfectly straight. Okay, so I'm going to take my cardstock and you'll notice that it is in the bottom right hand corner. I don't want to fold my cardstock and put it in here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in flat. I want to reduce the amount of movement on my cardstock. So if it was folded, I guess if you had the magnet on there you would be okay. You wouldn't have to worry too much about it moving. You know how when you put your card down it just has that flimsiness. So I wanted to eliminate any of that. And like I said, if you put your card down folded and then you put your magnet on top, you're probably okay. But uh, just to prevent any kind of anything going wrong, I'm just gonna put it in flat and I'm gonna stamp up here. So it's like putting my card in like this. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to position my stamp. Let me just figure out which one. Shara actually commented that paint stores have all kinds of great ideas too. My kids love the sample cards. That's a great idea. Yeah, those little paint swatches, that'd be a great place to look for inspiration. Okay, so words are never enough. So we'll do the bottom line first to thank you. So I'm putting them upside down, positioning it about where I want, and I'm closing my lid. Now, I want to make sure that this is completely straight. I can take this out and I can look at, there's grid marks on here, so I can look at this, I can see that it's a little bit crooked. That looks a bit better, but what I like to do just to make sure 
is I will bring in, this is the imaging sheet that used to come with our old stamp -a jig but you can use any piece of plastic, anything that you can see through, because you can wipe the ink off easily afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Memento ink. I'm putting the imaging sheet down and inking up my greeting and I'm going to stamp it down. So now I can see, all right, this, does it look like it's straight? And I think I want to alter it just a little bit. I'm gonna grab, actually, I'm gonna rotate it around and just see if that made it a little bit better. It's pretty straight. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is I will ink it up again, remove the imaging sheet and stamp it onto my card base. And you don't wanna to apply too much pressure, you just wanna apply a little bit of pressure because these are such fine words. If you apply too much pressure, then it's gonna change the shape of the words or make them almost blurry in some spots. So just a fine bit, little, little bit of pressure is perfect. Okay, so now if this was a card that I was mass producing, I'm just gonna take my cloth and clean this. Then what I would do is I would take my pad out or my plate out, rotate it around, leave that there because I know that it's lined up and ready to go for the next card. And then take this guy, position it where I think I want it, close that, stick it there, and now I'm going to take my imaging sheet again, ink this up, close it down, oh what are the chances of that, that looks pretty good first try, that was lucky, normally it takes a few tries. <laughs> Okay, and now I am going to ink it up again. I removed my imaging sheet. And a little bit of pressure, and there we go. Perfectly spaced words on your card base. And it, like I said, if you were mass producing that, look how easy that is. So simple. Okay, so I'll give that a clean. Clean my imaging sheet and then set it aside. And then we'll finish assembling the card. All right. So remember, you guys, for you get entries to win a prize if you are sharing the video or commenting. Ask me questions. I'm happy to answer them. And you get an entry for each comment. Um, and then, where are my pieces here? And um, you get five entries for sharing this video. I'm just gonna cover my ink here so I don't get ink all over myself. And fast fuse. Okay, so I'm gonna put this leaf like this. I want it, I don't know, about half an inch-ish from the side. And then I'll do the same on the other side with the gorgeous grape one. Half an inch, try to make it even. Another great place for inspiration, and this is probably the one we all turn to most often, is uh, Pinterest. Pinterest is a great place for inspiration. If you just, for color inspiration, well, for any kind of inspiration, really, but if you search color combinations on Pinterest, you will come up with a ton of ideas on different com color combinations. And they don't necessarily have to have the Stampin' Up! colors listed. You can easily pick out what the closest Stampin' Up! color would be to that whatever color combinations they're giving you there. So there we go. Super, super cute. All right, so those are the two. The other thing I did was I stamped on the inside. You are wonderful and added a couple leaves as well. And then it's always nice to stamp a coordinating envelope. So there's the envelope. Um, so I think that's it for today. Uh, if any other ideas come up 
on where to find color inspiration, then feel free to add them in, a com in the comments. I won't draw until next Friday's Facebook Live. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do next Friday, so if you have any suggestions um, over the next day or two, then feel free to post in the comment section and maybe I'll take, um, take that into consideration when I'm planning. I have kind of an idea, but I haven't decided what products or anything that I'm gonna use, so uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great weekend and uh, I hope you have time to get crafty. All right, take care guys.